The Apple Audio Dongle is one of the smallest and best performing DACs in its product category, all for the price of a lunchtime takeaway. But given its great value, how does it compare to a dedicated desktop DAC that measures even better than this great performing dongle? So this is a Shelly Enog Pro and it'll be today's competitor. The Enog Pro is yet another great value desktop DAC with excellent measurements and a nice feature set. It also happens to be made in the USA and has some unique colour options to make it your own or match your setup. The test gear used will include the Focal Asia and Tin Audio T2 IEM. I would like to test both DACs as speakers, but don't have an integrated amplifier to do so. And we'll be running both DACs into the Arcle 2.5 Pro, which is one of the best measuring headphone amplifiers at the moment. So this won't be a limiting factor to either of them. We'll start by quickly running over the core features and capabilities of both units. The Apple USB-C audio dongle is one of the lightest and most compact DACs that you can buy. It's USB bus powered, so there's no external power requirements. And providing your phone or computer supports USB audio class 2, and you can run the dongle up to 24 bit 48 kilohertz. It has a low output impedance of just 0.9 ohms, making it suitable for sensitive earphones and IEMs without skewing the frequency response. Audio Science Review measured the signal to noise and distortion ratio to be just 99 dB, putting it up there with many good performing DACs that cost a lot more. Its integrated USB interface is a very good performer as well, revealing very low jitter and distortion against its competitors. It's got a high dynamic range and its good performing Synab means that it's capable of up to 18 bits of resolution. That's above CD audio quality, but does fall a little bit short when it comes to high res audio. The Enog 2 Pro on the other hand is capable of up to 110 dB signal to noise and distortion ratio putting about 10 dB greater than the Apple Audio dongle. It also happens to have a higher dynamic range, however it does not have any USB interface, so it only has digital inputs which is a SPDIF Toslink connection or an RCA digital connection. This is okay for most desktop PC users but it would be quite limiting to laptop users as it's unlikely they'd have a digital audio out unless their laptop comes with an adapter and the 3.5mm audio jacks. The Enog 2 Pro being a dedicated unit has the advantage of having more outputs and a dedicated external switch mode power supply. It has RCA and balanced line outputs. Being a portability and mobile focused oriented device, the Apple Audio dongle only has variable line outputs, meaning you can't fix it to a 2 volt line output signal. And the overall output level falls a little bit low, below 2 volts, meaning you have to bump the gain up on your external amplifier as well. The Enog 2 Pro uses a reasonably high end modern DAC chip, it uses an AKM 4493. This is the same DAC used in the RME ADI 2 Pro, which costs substantially more, but this, this DAC is also found in more cheaper Chinese units such as the SMSL and topping devices. The end DAC chip used isn't the be all and end all. Since the overall performance of a DAC is greatly affected by its individual implementation and power supplies used, so you could have the very best chip in your DAC but having a poor implementation means it sounds like talking for a tin can. Right, moving away from objectivity and let's move into the realm of subjectivity and let's begin talking about sound. Both DACs are neutral in their frequency response, meaning they do not attenuate any particular frequency bands and present the music as the artist intended. For CD quality audio, both DACs are able to pick up very similar levels of detail and they can be difficult to pick apart at times. Presence is more apparent for the Enog 2, and it gives more air to the sound, creating a greater sense of space. More apparent presence is the high frequency details. Too much can cause sibilance and too little can make the audio seem closed in. The Enog 2 is also able to hit a bit harder, with much stronger dynamics. The Apple dongle cannot handle higher sampling rates, such as the Enog 2 Pro, which can do up to 192kHz. The Apple dongle is limited to 48 and 44.1 on mobile. And it's when using high res audio, the advantage of the Enog really becomes to shine, and the performance become even more apparent, bringing greater clarity, dynamics and details that are difficult or not present within the output of the Apple dongle. The larger dynamic range is able to be fully utilised, and we get a greater swing between our lowest and highest volumes. This makes tracks with a progressive build up more enjoyable. Both of the DACs are able to provide good stereo separation, and don't do any crossfeed or signal processing. When paired with sensitive IEM, such as the Tin Audio T2s, the background noise is reduced when using the Enor 2 Pro and elevated for the Apple dongle. Listening to the Elysias directly from the Apple dongle is possible, but even these sensitive headphones are not able to be fully driven by it. The presentation and experience is overall more enjoyable when using the Enor 2 Pro. When paired with well mastered audio, the advantages become almost obvious. Details are given more range to breathe, improving clarity and presenting a greater sense of space. 
However, for most CD quality audio are below, the advantages become much less apparent and you'll be hard pressed to tell the difference between them without listening critically. The performance of the Apple dongle is very impressive for the price, and pairing it with a high performance amplifier such as the Arcle 2.5 Pro may seem a bit overkill, but they do pair surprisingly well. So if your budget is low, you can't go far wrong with picking up the Apple dongle, especially for use of IEMs on the go, and you can add a headphone amplifier for use at home, and still get reasonable results. Amps like the Arcle 2.5 Pro or the Topping L30 are a lot of value for money, so until we all get Neuralinks and stream audio directly into our head, stay tuned for some more audio reviews to come.